Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle. Three circles in a square are inscribed in a 111, 148, and 185 triangle as shown, 185 being the base, find the radius of each circle. If you like this video, please comment, subscribe, and hit the bell button for notifications. If you don't like the video, let me know why in the comment section down below. I appreciate all kinds of feedback. Thank you for watching and let's get started. So we do have this type of triangle and why are these numbers so large, right? If you think about it, uh, the, the answers is kind of, uh, the numbers are kind of large, so why? Well, if you look at it very carefully, actually, you're gonna notice one thing here. If you take all these numbers and, by the way, they're, they just have a common factor, which is 37, right? So if you go ahead and divide everything by 37, you're gonna notice that this is three times 37, this is, 4 times 37, and this is 5 times 37. Great. So this is basically like a 3, 4, 5 triangle, but I just expanded, okay? So that means we have a right triangle. So, and the figure is drawn to scale, so I can just go ahead and mark it as a right angle there. And the base is 185, which is the longest side, which is the hypotenuse, by the way. So this is our basically 3, 4, 5 triangle, uh, and we're just going to find the radius of each circle. In order to find the radius of each circle, we're gonna need the side length. So let's go ahead and start uh, by finding the side lengths. So what am I gonna do? Well, I'm gonna take advantage of the fact that, of course, these are three, four, five triangles, pretty much. But uh, since the actual lengths are not necessarily three, four, five, I'm just gonna use multiples of three, four, five. So let's go ahead and call this side three A, and this is gonna be a four B, and the hypotenuse is gonna be a five B. B can be any constant. And then, oh, actually, I sort of started off with A and then I went to B. Okay, so 3A, 4A, 5A. And then let's say this is 3B, 4B, and 5B. And then we'll have 3C, 4C, and 5C. All right, all right. What about this length here? Well, since it's across from the, or the opposite side, it's a square, by the way, this is a square. And that's 5p. Now, I know you're, you're probably saying, hey, this is a square, so those lengths are equal. Yeah, we'll get to that. Don't worry. We're going to get to that in a little bit. But here's the main idea. We realize that this is a kind of like a 3, 4, 5 triangle, and then it must be a right angle, I mean right triangle, and then we'll just find the lengths using these variables. Okay? That's pretty much it. So what am I going to do next? Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is, actually, uh, I'd like to set up a system of equations here. Since the lengths are given, I should be able to solve for them, right? So I have three equations. I have 5a plus 3b, 5a plus 3b. That's the shorter leg, which is 111, all right? And then I have the longer leg, which is 4b plus 5c, 4b plus 5c, that should be 148. And the hypotenuse is 3a plus 5b, plus 4c is equal to 185. Now, this is a system of equations. Uh, obviously, it can be solved, right? By elimination, by substitution, so on and so forth. But one thing to remember here, that's an important point, is that this is a square, right? So all the side lengths are equal. Even though we use different variables to express them, a, b, c, uh, they are the same length. So what does that mean? It means that for a, is the same thing as 5b, which is the same thing as 3c. So that really makes solving our system of equations easier because we don't really have to go into, you know, what should I multiply 111 by, so on and so forth, to eliminate the b and then c, so on and so forth. This gives us a really good, um, you know, method for solving this problem. And it comes from the fact that we have a square in the middle. Okay, now, how can I interpret this though? Like, how can I put these all together? So I have three variables, but four equations sort of, right? Or maybe five, uh, because this gives me actually more information than I need. But this is valuable. So I just want you to understand that this is very valuable because this kind of gives us a proportional relationship, right? So A, B, C are obviously proportional. So how am I gonna proceed? Well, one way to think about it is, uh, think about the least common multiple of four, five, and three. And that would be 30, 60, 120. Okay, that's 60. So since the LCM is 60, I can call this number 15K, 
because I have to use a multiple, right? Because A is not necessarily 15. And this is going to be a 12K and C is going to be a 20K based on my assumption, right? Okay, cool. Now, I was able to express everything like A, B, C in terms of a single variable, which is what is cool about this equation. So let's go ahead and use the third one and substitute these values into that. So 3A, since A is 15K, it's going to be 45K. Be careful here. 5B, B is 12K. 5B is going to be 60K. And C is 20K. 4C would be 80K. And they all add up to 185. Now, you're going to realize why I picked these large numbers because the answers are going to be a little nicer that way. Okay, so when you add these up, you're going to get 185K is equal to 185. And then from here, we get K equals 1. Awesome. This is why I picked these numbers, okay? Hopefully, that's more clear now. And now from here, since I know K, I can find the value of A, B, and C separately. A is 15K, so A would be 15. B would be 12 and C would be 20, right? Awesome. So I got the values of ABC, which means pretty much all the lengths that we are concerned with are found so I can plug it in, so on and so forth. But here's one observation I'd like you to make because all these triangles, and I'm talking about four of them, right? They're all similar. So similarity is beautiful. I mean, a lot of problems can be solved at the competition level, Olympiad level with similarity. That's a really good tool besides the Pythagorean theorem, of course. But, um, you know, how, do, how does that play out in our problem? So this is what I'd like to say. We need to find the radius of each circle, right? Let's call these radii. Let's call this one. Oh, that's too light. Okay, maybe let's call this one X. Okay, and let's call this one Y and let's call this one Z. So the radii is A, B, C, and then, I mean, the side lengths are like A, B, C's, and then this is X, Y, Z, okay? Alphabetical order. So, how do I proceed? Well, the circle, if you think about just, let's just isolate one of them, okay? So this is like a 3A, 4A triangle, right? 3A, 4A, 5A, and then I do have a in circle here, which radi whose radius is X. Okay, cool. Now, what am I going to do here? Well, we're going to use the basic fact that the area of a right triangle can easily be found by multiplying the base times height divided by 2. So the area is going to be 3a times 4a divided by 2. And that is going to be 6a squared. So the area of this triangle is 6a squared in terms of a. And that's kind of nice because without getting into larger numbers, we can just find it, uh, you know, in terms of a. And we can do this for all triangles. The second one is going to be 6b squared. And the third one is going to be 6c squared. So this is something you, that can be generalized. Make sense? Okay, cool. So I apply it to one problem and then I'll, I can just, uh, you know, extend it. So, but how does that help me find the radius? Well, uh, one method is going about the SIR formula. What is the SIR formula? A equals S times R. What is S? Semi-perimeter. What is semi-perimeter? You add the sides and divide by 2. 3A plus 4A plus 5A divide by 2, and that's going to give you 6a. So semi-perimeter is 6a, radius is what I'm trying to find, and I got two expressions for the area. Let's go ahead and set them equal to each other. So we get from here, area is equal to 6a squared, which is equal to s times r. Beautiful. So what does that mean? It means that r is equal to a. Beautiful. Wow, that's amazing, isn't it? Okay. Well, that's what it is, right? I mean, why is that A, if you think about it? Well, it's got to be A because if you kind of make these, you know, connections, you're going to notice that uh, if this is X, this is also X. And then this needs to be 3A minus X. This needs to be 3A minus X. This is 4A minus X. This is 4A minus X. You know that if you draw a tangent to a circle from outside, those two pieces are going to be the same length. So here we get that 4A minus X plus 3A minus X is equal to 5a, right? And then this gives you what? Uh, 7a minus 5a is 2a, 2a equals 2x, x equals a. So you can also verify it differently, but you know, I just wanted to use the area formula because it's kind of cool. Anyway, so the radii for then, each for each one of these is going to be equal to, okay, r is going to be a, uh, x is going to be a, y is going to be b, and z is going to be c. So these values are actually the values of the radii. So this means x is equal to 15, y is equal to 12, and z is equal to 20. And we are done. 
Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.